Hi everyone, this is Jeff of Tau Flare Mouse. Today is a salute to Italy, and we'll be shooting a slug made by a company named Gualandi. If you're in the United States, there's a good chance you've never even heard of these slugs before. But if you're in Europe, there's a pretty good chance you've heard of these, or at least the reputation of these slugs. Our good friends at Ballistic Products are now selling these slugs in the United States, so that's good news. Now they call them the DGS Thunderbolt slugs, DGS standing for Dangerous Game Slug. These hard, heavy slugs are very popular with boar hunters around the world. And yes, these are heavy slugs. These are 1 and 3 8 ounce or 40 grams. That's a heavy load. And it should be noted that is the exact same weight of the Brennicky Black Magic slugs. Now quite a few European viewers were quick to note that our LBC Sabo slug was also manufactured by Gualandi in Italy. The big Thunderbolt slug on the right doesn't require a Sabo because there's no room to put a Sabo on there. It's already the same uh, diameter as the bore of a 12 gauge shotgun. Now this slug has excellent performance out of a smooth bore shotgun but today we'll be shooting these through our Beretta rifle choke tube and you'll notice that the dimensions of the slug allow proper engagement with the rifling. Okay, we've loaded these slugs into three and a half inch magnum shells with a rated velocity of 1500 feet per second. Let's see if we can make some kindling. Baron will be shooting this through our Benelli Nova. Damn! And we had excellent stability right out of the barrel but you can also see a lot of uh, superheated gases which distort the imagery and that's why uh, I often avoid using high brass either they create huge distortion clouds like that or they produce a lot of smoke we were able to recover the slug and it was mostly intact uh, it really shows you how hard this lead is they probably uh, mix some antimony with the lead when they cast it and the slug penetrated five of these two by sixes before it squirted out the side. And I don't think I stacked the boards very straight, so that's kind of my fault. Next we'll have Nick take a shot, and he'll be shooting at a 20 pound disc of lead. It's about an inch and a half thick. Now it's really important to know that we almost never take any practice shots. We have so few slugs available to actually test that we have to show every single shot. And of course experienced shooters understand that every slug has its own characteristics, its different points of aim for different slugs and all that. So Nick knows where to aim now, so let's give him one more redemption shot and see if he can hit that sucker right in the center. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's a better shot, right? Now that slug probably knocked out a pound of lead out of that plate. The, uh, the big chunks of lead that it pushed out the back uh, didn't go much further than the box of sand, but it left a massive hole in this plate. Now imagine that's uh, the skull of a huge wild boar it's gonna drop that boar like a sack of potatoes and to this day this is the most powerful factory slug we've ever shot ballistically these are very similar to the Brennicky black magic slugs which also are 1 and 3 8 ounce and also are fired at a velocity of 1500 feet per second and I imagine down the road we'll be testing the Brennicky black magic slugs also but we definitely see excellent stability with these Thunderbolt slugs. And as I've said before, a stable slug is going to be a very accurate slug. Now to this point, we've had good results shooting through that rifled choke. Now on this test, you will see a failure because of the choke. <laughs> Now in real time it looked like nothing went wrong, but in reality what happened was the wadding, the plastic wadding attached to the lead nose, actually separated. 
And of course, that plastic tail assembly is very critical that it stays attached because it acts like the feathers on a badminton birdie, right? And whether or not you're shooting with rifling or not, it definitely needs that drag stabilization to fly straight. Now really this was a fluke, uh, an anomaly, but it was really cool to be able to capture it actually happening. Now of course at that close range of about 20 yards, it didn't affect the accuracy very much, but if you got out there 50, 100, 150 yards or so, it would definitely throw it off quite a bit. I believe what happened was, you know, as the, the slug's going down the barrel, straight without any rifling then it hits that rifle choke tube and it's just too much of a shock and it actually causes the slug to dislodge and of course we find all this stuff out in hindsight you know we went to Gualandi's website and it actually says avoid using rifle chokers or rifle choke tubes and I'm sure that they have encountered the same problem through their own testing Okay, we have one more test. This time, Baron will be shooting at an AR-500 armor plate. And as you can see, it's getting pretty windy out there. Damn! And it went through the lead plate fine, but the AR-500 plate was no match for it. Just laughed at it. It's pretty easy to understand why these are so popular in Europe. They're a, a powerful, accurate slug. We only had the one problem with the one slug and that was because of the rifle choke tube and really I I have to accept the blame for that I just used the wrong equipment but of course you're supposed to be using either a fully rifled shotgun like slug gun or just a cylinder bore shotgun but I really appreciate the opportunity to test these out um, as I've said before we weren't paid by ballistic products to do this demonstration they just sent us uh, like six of these slugs and we shot them and we wanted to share this product with you guys. I think it's great that this Italian product is now available in the United States. If you're interested in these, please check out Ballistic Products. I have a link in the description. Thanks for watching.